My name is Michael McGee and I'm a junior. My theme of my project is what is the gaze on different cultures through great detail. I chose that theme because it gives me a lot of like leverage and ideas that come to mind. You know, there are a lot of cultures out there. I would like to learn different cultures. I want to travel more, go through different countries, you know, get out of America and just see more than just what I've been born around. Uh, my name is Mackenzie Croft and I am a senior this year. It's a funny story. I actually broke my foot sophomore year and I had nothing else to do. So my dad got me an iPad so I could draw digitally and I've been in love with art ever since. Uh, my overall theme for my AP work this year was how can nature represent human concepts and emotions. I chose that because nature has been used in societies as symbolism for a lot of years. So they've been used in myths, they've been used in legends, so I wanted to capitalize that and use them to tell my stories. Ayana Sila, and I'm a senior. So I chose what's found in nature. I think everything out in nature is really pretty, and I actually had a set of markers that was all like earth tones, so I thought it would be pretty nice to kind of have each of my works with the same like set of markers, so they all have the same kind of colors in them. My name is Sarah Bryan, I'm 17 years old, and I'm in senior year. Well, it's like elementary school, and I don't know, I just kind of like go on like YouTube videos and I would just be like, like, you know, like the like basic, like how to draw this. I would just like, I can do that. And then I just kept doing it. And yeah, now, now we're here. My whole theme for like this whole portfolio was I'm delving into fantasy and fantasy art and like storyboards almost. Um, And I kind of did this to like, so I've always done like realistic before and I'm terrible about using references. I wanted to push myself and with the whole portfolio with no references and just my own imagination. Um, so I like first went into like the happier fans, like the more basic fantasy you think of, like um, Disney or something. And then I kind of, kind of sad, but I got like darker and darker and went to like more like dystopia and like I don't know, starker concept. I don't know. I, I don't know. Fantasy just like I was trying to think of like a topic that was vague enough to get a bunch of ideas out while still being like easily like spotted and specific enough to me. And I wanted to, like I said, like get out of like a realistic and like box kind of topic and just be kind of like a limitless feel. My name is Stephanie Rosati. I'm in 12th grade, so I'm a senior. I've just been doing it since as long as I can remember. Like, started, like, the earliest I can remember is drawing on napkins at restaurants when I was, like, a little kid. And then I've been in art shows since middle school, and I've and then it just led to AP art. My theme for AP Studio is um, all about dreams, specifically how they're so nonsense but so clear at the same time. So I tried to make art that like showed surrealism and just looked very dreamlike and I wanted to um, like encourage people to look at it as if it was a dream. Like look at the visuals and be like wow those are some weird visuals but then try to look deeper into it for like the meanings and stuff. Kind of like how people try to find meanings in dreams. It's just always been fascinating to me how dreams work and how like every different person, like different dreams mean different things to different people and they're, it, it's just such an incredible concept to me and I really think that it, exploring that in art is it's just so like so limitless really. Uh, like two years ago. No, like three years ago, I got like a new thing, and like I saw a jar and clipped. I was like, I was like blind for like two weeks. So like, once I like was unblind, like uh, I just saw a jar. My theme is the where is the life of artists, which is like like the hardship that they go through, all the struggles that they go through, all of that. Um, I chose it because I thought it'd be interesting because you know you know like a lot of people are like old. Oh, uh, 
as yeah, these people going through my cautious my life, like chart, like for example, like charter actors, like maybe go through the most of like um Macaulay, the dude from Home like he had a hard life. So I thought it'd be more interesting to like express it through art. My name is Kylie Watan and I'm in 11th grade. It's how different water forms affect the human experience. I first got this idea for my topic when I was in my biology class and about different water forms. And um, that's when Miss Walton asked me if I wanted to do AP. And it was the freshest thing in my mind. My name is Kylie Bromwell and I am a senior. Um, the overall theme was the emphasis of human color, or oh my god, human emotion based off of color. <laughs> <laughs> um, and really it was just to take human emotions and what you or I feel every day and just kind of portray that with colors and lines and texture and all that kind of stuff. Because it relates to me a lot, so, you know, being a senior in high school is kind of tough sometimes, so, you know, all the emotions I feel or things I've just felt throughout kind of help me express that in a illustrative way. And yeah, I don't know, it just really stuck with me. My name's Kai Frederick, I'm in 12th grade. I got started in art from my dad. He started taking me to museums when I was like five or six. And he's always been making art, and he's an art teacher. So he really influenced me to get started. Like I remember when I was learning how to read, I was also learning the color wheel and how to paint. And over time, it's become like something that I do on my own, not with my dad. The overall theme of my project is what is Satanism, so it's about you know, what Satanism actually is, it's not like devil worship or anything like that, it's accepting others how they are. Satanism is just something I find really interesting, I mean, I feel like a lot of people would classify themselves as a Satanist if they knew what it was, it's not like loving Satan or anything like that. You, it's not a theistic religion. It's more of a belief system. A lot of people are accepting others, loving others, want to respect people, and that's kind of what Satan is. My name is Genevieve Bachman. My grade is a senior. I'm a 12th grader. So since kindergarten, I've always been like doodling on my papers, um, albeit it was pretty crappy. But it's fine. I started doing that and I started tracing still lifes because I thought that was cool and interesting and my mom really encouraged me to continue doing that because she thought it was so cool. So I started doing that and I didn't take any art classes until actually high school. So that's when I started taking it like a lot more seriously. But I've been like, I've been selling my art since middle school and everything. So I've definitely been doing it my whole life. The overall theme of my project is how does grief affect the body, and um, I base that off of my my personal issues because my mother passed away in 2020 due to a heart attack, and I wanted to show the five stages of grief through my paintings, and I wanted other people to be able to feel themselves in it and be able to not just be focused on me, but also have other people be able to see how it really feels and like be able to connect with my work. My name is Trinity Robinson and I'm in 12th grade. I'm a senior. <laughs> my overall theme for my projects are um, what happens to objects we forget about. So like nostalgia, like for instance, like old telephones we used to have like in the 90s, but we don't use them anymore because now we have smartphones, stuff like that. Okay, I chose this theme because I've always been obsessed with abandoned places, especially like abandoned houses. I always go, anytime I'm on a trip, look for abandoned places. Um, so like the forgotten things really tie into abandoned things. So instead of just doing, you know, abandoned places themselves, I tied it in along with like abandoned things, like objects as well. Hello, my name is Kendall and I'm a senior. My overall theme for this was how do you isolate yourself using technology? I chose this theme because I feel it applies to my life. I get very overwhelmed sometimes and instead of just facing my emotions and handling them in the most more responsible way, I tend to just like stick my nose in my phone, listen to music, watch TV, and just kind of ignore those feelings of stress. And in my art, I wanted to show 
How are the different ways that people can isolate themselves using the technology? Hi, my name is Nicole, and I teach art one through four in ACC. I have been teaching for 14 years. I went to ODU for my undergraduate, and then my master's from the Academy of Art University in California. Um, I love teaching art all levels, um, but what I really love about teaching AP Studio is that each student really gets to explore a topic that they're really interested in for almost 10 months and so they're really able to dive into how they would want to create art as a professional artist versus when it's doing assignments. So it's really fun to see them explore their topics and their materials and see like, what kind of art they would make. I think the students this year have done an amazing job. They did a really great job creating um, really interesting questions this year that haven't been used before and being really original. Um, this is one of the largest groups of AP students that we've had so far, and they worked really hard all year long and created really amazing work. This piece, you might know her. Her name is Mariah. I did a portrait of her for one of my art projects. I did this in graphite, charcoal, and uh, yeah. I named this Mariah's Egypt, specifically because she has lock extensions above the head wrap and locked extensions actually come from Egypt. So that's the explanation. This piece is called Kalima. She was a goddess that was worshipped in the Middle East of Asia. I did this out of acrylic paint, charcoal, graphite, and watercolor. So there's, there's a lot of a lot of media here. The the this side over here where it's black and white, that's supposed to be like symbolizing like, it's like statue form and then the other is like, you know, just colored, you know. This is my piece called Poppy for Peace. And poppies are really interesting because they have colliding meanings almost when it comes to war. A red poppy is used to represent war and honor veterans that have fought into it. And a white poppy is used to represent peace and often represent innocent citizens who have died in war. And oftentimes they, they're seen as a collision. So I wanted to do a piece that's representative of leaving war behind and moving into the light. Kind of, I love and hate this one. It's because I'm scared of centipedes, first of all. But bugs are out of nature. The original idea, I, was, I wanted to incorporate bugs somehow into my project. Um, and I was going to do like a, a whole ton. I was going to throw them all on, but I just decided to do one really creepy one. And I think it turned out really cool. This one I did, that's um, called Closing Shift. And um, this is, like I said, later in my kind of portfolio. Like I said, kind of got a little bit darker. And this is when I kind of got into dystopia. So I wanted to be kind of like a post-apocalyptic vibe of like a, like, everything is like a red. This one's my favorite I did. It actually got first place in the Spring Art Show, so that's pretty cool. It's called Dream Flow. It's India ink on wood. India ink is just like the liquid ink that you apply with a brush. And I really wanted to just do a bunch of fine details, kind of showing the progression of a dream how everything kind of connects together, like you got water and then birds, butterflies, and they all kind of flow together. This is uh, called Monkey Mess, which kind of resembles like how paint companies control like artists, musicians, and I think it's the same called like, Dance Monkey, where the artist is like a monkey, it's a performance monkey, so it kind of looks like it's like the crew, the crew, the crew of a uh, company's This is my eighth one, I think. It's ice fishing. Um, I did a lot of research about different fish and stuff they usually catch. And um, uh, this is made out of a cool paint here. So this one is definitely one of my favorites just because of like the colors I got to play around with. And it was just really long and a giant piece to do. So the idea is really just like the, how you portray yourself is really different in the mirror, and especially like emotionally. And you may think of yourself in like a really like just any sort of light, and then when you see your reflection, you're kind of just like, oh, maybe that's not what I look like. And then 
Yeah, it was just really fun playing around with different colors, and again, I did all this in colored pencil, so it took a really long time. This one is more so about how people use religions to hate on others, and I don't think any religion encourages that. I don't think any of my Christian friends would encourage hating on others because God said so. But a lot of people do that, and it's really not cool. So I was trying to show how it's not cool to use any sort of religion to justify your hate towards any group of people. This is my first piece out of all of all 12 of mine. It's intended to be the first piece that you see because it's the only piece that involves two people um, being connected. And it's supposed to re represent me and my mom and like motherly comfort. And um, there's cicadas in it. They move from hatching all the way to being full-born cicadas and everything to represent growth and like moving on from what previously happened. All right, this one is based on lack, lack, lack of appetite, because um, you really don't feel like eating, you don't have any motivation, and I wouldn't show that even though you may try to do things and try to eat, you really can't, and in the end it's going to be okay, because eventually you will be able to go back and eat yourself again. So for the fish, I added a plug onto his head, and that's supposed to be like the technology that's invading it. Um, I put it in the center of his head and have the plug closer to the camera. So it looks like the viewers just kind of being lured in to like this technology that the fish has been taking over by. To me, it kind of looks like an angler fish, which I think is really cool because they lure in like this, those tiny little fish with the light on top of their head. And this one is doing the same thing. I also made the fish entirely in stipulism, but then I did the plug in hatching because it's like a different pen technique. So it's kind of, it doesn't belong there. The hatching doesn't belong with the stipulism. For the one with the girl, she's kind of sitting in a park and you're supposed to go to parks to, you know, be one with nature and just experience outside and get fresh air. But even though she's in this area, she still needs like VR to truly just escape and get that relaxer. Um, and then she's been there so long. That's why I kind of put the birds there. I also think they look pretty cool. <laughs> Art makes me feel really good because it helps me express myself when usually words, I tend to ramble with them. Relief, sometimes anger because you know, every artist is always not good enough. You know, they look at their work, they're like, oh God, this is so bad. I don't know, it's a hard feeling to describe because you're creating something from your brain in, in a physical form, but it makes me happy. Like, it, when I'm like stressed out, I can just like sit down and like, all right, what am I gonna color today? I think it's pretty relieving when you get to just get anything like off your mind and draw it somehow. Um, the feeling I get is that I feel like I can express myself through my art, things that people normally can't see and I can't normally express through words. So I feel like people can understand me better from what I draw and do. I feel like I'm not a good person with words, so it's much better if I'm like, let's say like I'm really angry or really sad, it's just a lot easier for me to just like do it visually rather than like, I don't know, like some sort of journal, but like, it's kind of like journaling.